Are you a podcaster? Maybe you've got that big idea and you're looking for a network to join. The multi-award winning Ozcast Network can get your content to eyes and ears all over the world. Join now for the first month free and you could be featuring this sound at the beginning of your podcast. Ozcast. Simply head to ozcastnetwork.com for details. Hey, it's Kari Watt here. How was your weekend? Did you enjoy Mother's Day? Tristan, my dog, bought me a wonderful Mother's Day gift of a meal prepared by Luke's Kitchen, Luke Mannion. It was simply delicious. So I hope you enjoyed your Mother's Day and you were spoilt rotten if you're not a mother. Well, I hope you had a great day with your mother. Today, we're talking about social media updates to keep you ahead of the latest trends. If you're new, I'm Kari, the creator of the Kari Cares podcast, Kari Watt YouTube channel, and a digital strategist with nearly two decades of experience in marketing and communications. For the best digital and social media tips to rank higher on Google search, subscribe to hashtag Kari Cares podcast to make sure you never, ever miss out on these updates. And you can reach out and follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Kari Watt to read posts about digital marketing and some behind the scenes. First, I'd like to personally thank Podcast Fan 89 for leaving the following review. A fantastic podcast with advice that is perfect for businesses big and small. Highly recommend. I want to thank you because you've made my week. I'm really glad you're enjoying my podcast. Now, let's head into what's happening in social media so far. I'm going to start with Snapchat because they've launched a new painting lens with British artist Damien Hurst to help raise funds for Partners in Health. The new lens lets you create your own spinning painting by pouring in different colours so that you can create different effects. It's kind of similar to his paintings that were really popular in the 90s. YouTube is seeing some major shifts in viewing behaviour. Well, (laughs) yeah, with the COVID-19. Of course they are. And it's now looking to provide new ad options to help marketeers like you tap into these evolving consumption trends. Even before the lockdowns, connected TV viewers were YouTube's fastest growing audience segment. And as people become more accustomed to watching online content on their big screens, you know, it's becoming even more popular. But now with people seeking more entertainment options whilst they're confined to their homes, YouTube's TV connected viewing has gone through the roof. Now, globally, people are watching full length movies on YouTube. It's grown 800%. TV shows, it's grown 125% and live content is 250%. I mean, it's a great opportunity. If you wanted to start a YouTube channel, now's the time. YouTube is also adding skippable ads for content, which we know about. I mean, that's casted onto the TV screen, which is it's kind of a little unclear given that you can already skip ads in the content you view on screens. They're also working on a new option for publishers to add paying subscribers on their YouTube channels and plans to start testing at the end of this year end of 2020 to help support the news industry. Now the Australian government recently outlined a new regulation that forces both Google and Facebook to compensate publishers when they display their content on their platform. I mean this legislation or regulation is due for release in July 2020. Google has flatly refused to pay for the news content. In their view, it already provides traffic to these sites, so why should it have to pay in order to help guide people to them? As a result, Google has simply removed publications who don't agree to its guidelines from its index. Now, YouTube's also announced a virtual graduation event with a commencement address from Barack Obama. Well, I should say previous Barack Obama president for the class of 2020. So you can imagine that the star power alone will bring in huge audiences and generate a lot of attention. I mean, they're bringing in people like Lady Gaga, Alicia Keys, Jackie Johanna, Kelly Rowland, Mr. Kate. I mean, this provides an opportunity for relevant 
marketing tie-ins, right? I mean, many businesses who are losing out on significant opportunities due to the closure of events, like graduation parties, now they've got these virtual options could provide a great way for people to participate, even if they don't, can't actually leave their homes. So there's a great marketing opportunity there. Let's move on to Twitter. Now, Twitter has launched a new small-scale test on iOS, which gives warnings on tweet replies that could include harmful language. They've put out a post last week. It says, when things get heated, you may say things you don't mean. To let you rethink a reply, we're running a limited experiment on iOS with a prompt that gives you the option to revise your reply before it's published if it uses language that could be harmful. If your reply includes words or phrases that Twitter's system has identified as aggressive, harmful or offensive, a prompt will now appear asking if you want to revise your response, which I think that's a great idea. But how do they know? (laughs) I mean, sometimes we use slang, you know, that could be offensive, but, you know, how do they know? These algorithms, I don't know, they're becoming more smarter than what we are. In their view, it's to improve on-platform discussions to keep users safe and free from abuse. Now, Facebook last month launched a new platform called Community Help, where people can offer assistance to others within their community, or they could request help with tasks from locals. Now, the Help Hub enables users to request and respond to calls for help in relation to food, supplies, local resources, and volunteers. Now, Facebook is also incorporating ways in which people can support local businesses, donate to blood banks, promote non-profits and so much more. The new community hub is available in Australia, the US, UK, France and Canada. Now Facebook has published a new set of tools to help you map out a social media content calendar and have included a basic content calendar template. Now the template includes when to post, what to post and where to post to ensure you get optimal performance because you can't just make up when to post for example, you need to know when your audience is going to be the most responsive. The same goes for what to post. I mean, through research and experimentation, we'll come down to the specific audience that you're trying to reach. Now, you can sign up for my course, The Social Media Playbook, where I walk you through step-by-step on how to post like on social media like a professional you'll be able to spot future trends have a five-step blueprint so you can understand your customers and what drives them to buy the strategy that can survive long after we move into the next social media trend now you will learn what to do and most importantly what not to do to make sure you rank high for seo which is search engine optimization you'll also understand the world of influencer marketing and how it works and how to use it to boost your brand and your product awareness the right way in an authentic way you will know how to create excitement with authentic influencers who want to become your brand advocates and you'll learn which social media tactics matter most to your business within your niche you'll also build a community and trust with your online and offline community and how to best connect with them plus you get three bonuses of Instagram story hacks, Facebook and Instagram advertising strategies, and learn the SEO secrets that digital marketing agencies use. It's absolutely jam-packed with everything you need to know to post on social media like a professional marketeer. Head on over to kariwat.com. In the top menu, you will see social media playbook button or check out the comment section below and I'll add a link there. Now, moving back to Facebook, they've announced its new oversight board to guide the content rules on their platform. Now, the new board includes a range of experts from different fields to help steer the company's approach. The board includes Mayana Kiai, Director of Human Rights Watch Global Alliances and Partnerships. You've got Nagid Dad, founder of Digital Rights Foundation, 
Andy Bayoni, Senior Editor and Board Member of the Jakarta Post, Julie Awanu, Executive Director of Internet Sands Frontiers, Ellie Thornington-Schmidt, who's the former Prime Minister of Denmark, Ronaldo Lemos, Professor of Rio de Janeiro State University's Law School, Alan Rosbridger, Principal of Lady Margaret Hall, Oxford, and Evelyn Oswald, who's a professor and chair of University of Oklahoma College of Law. So quite a good mix there. Now, Facebook is running a new series of education sessions for Facebook group admins, which are designed to help you manage your online communities and facilitate the communication between community leaders. Over the next few months, they're planning to run a series of sessions focused on a different element of online community management. And in May this month, there is you're going back to basics for setting up and maintaining a thriving community through their community foundations. In June, it's all about growth in your community. So ways to promote your community, manage the growth and get the right people in. July is engaging with your community. Tips for getting your members talking and for what to post and when. August, managing conflict. Oh, that's a good one. Strategies for managing conflict. I like that one. And in September, hosting events, getting your community together online and offline. These sessions will provide guidance for anyone looking to make the most out of your Facebook groups and they will include special guests including Mark Zuckerberg himself and also product announcements obviously relating to facilitating group engagement. If you head on over to kariwat.com, inside the insight section, you'll find social media update number five, which is this one. And I will include the links that I've mentioned about Facebook and various other things in there. Now, Facebook has also updated its free basics internet connection initiative called Discover to connect 50% of the global population that cannot access the web. I had no idea about this. Facebook does maintain full control over the platform and is therefore able to pick and choose which websites users can access. So you could see an increase on Facebook's own products there. They've also added a new setting to stop private Facebook groups going public. Now, Facebook has allowed groups with less than 5,000 members to switch their privacy setting every 28 days. But with a new change, it will mean that once your group is switched to private, there's no going back. They're doing this to protect group member privacy and to stop meme groups from baiting new members by switching between public and private. I'm not sure if that's good or not. I mean, sometimes you want it to be public, don't you, to you know, help people find you. I guess if you've got a small group and you want to keep it public for a while, that's pretty okay too. I mean, there's all the these things about transparency. But if you're a coach like I am, do you do that? I don't know. I was thinking about doing a Facebook group, but a lot of people that follow me are on LinkedIn. So there you go. Now, Instagram will now show stories and posts from health bodies in user feeds that you follow in your story feed to help the increase of distribution of key COVID-19 updates and information. Now this relates to health organisations that you've chosen to follow so it won't increase the reach of messaging across a board and it won't change anything for you if you don't want to see this in your Insta feed but if you're using Instagram to stay connected with key updates you'll find it easier between the two streams. Now, Instagram is also testing some new ways to navigate through your stories feed to help you find more stories that you'll be interested in. And one of the new tests will enable you to side the main stories frame down to reveal the stories tray at the top of the screen and then switch through to each. So in other words, it's just going to make it a little bit easier to find content that you might not know about, but you're interested in. Let's head on over to Pinterest. Now, while it still feels like we're a long way off returning to normal, 
Due to the COVID-19 lockdown, there are signs that many countries are moving into the recovery phase. Yay! Which could see a shift back to regular operations within a couple of months. Now, Pinterest have seen their users return to more future oriented interests such as vacation and event planning. I mean, it could mean that it's worth planning now for the next consumer shift. Now, Pinterest has published a new guide called How to Inspire Through Uncertainty. It's 14 pages with an overview of key stages of recovery and how you can focus on each one. Now, we all know Pinterest is a platform where people consciously come to plan their future rather than scrolling through posts about the past, which means as a marketeer, you get an indication of where consumers are heading before they get there. And it helps you predict what's to come in your category. Now, Pinterest has also announced that it's updated its Shopify app, adding a new option that helps e-commerce merchants to feed your entire product catalog directly into shoppable pins, boosting your exposure to the platform. Now, the platform has got 367 million monthly active users. Think about that for a second. It's a massive opportunity that I find a lot of my e-commerce clients missing out on because they don't understand the platform. But Pinterest is one of the best platforms when it comes to selling things. And that gives me the idea that I want to add another bonus to my social media playbook course about Pinterest. I want to help you if you're a marketeer or you have an e-commerce business, even if you're a coach, there is so many opportunities on Pinterest to get your products out there and to sell. Now, Pinterest has also added a new set of planning tools within pins and boards to help you track ideas and inspiration. I mean, first off, Pinterest is adding new notes within the boards to help you, you know, put in details about your pin discoveries, such as ingredients or creating a to-do list within your boards. They're also adding a new date listing on boards for events and for archiving purposes. I don't know, do you archive things? I don't really bother with that unless it's outdated information. So make sure you tune in to Kari Cares podcast this coming Thursday to learn how you can win every time with digital media. Now, if you're feeling extra loving, I would be really grateful if you left me a review on iTunes. Reviews help other people find my podcast and they're also fun for me to go in and read because your opinion matters to me. And all you need to do is go into the rating and reviews and write a review and let me know what your favorite part of this podcast is. Now remember to share this with a friend who could use a helping hand. Why? Because Kari cares about women helping women and men who could use a helping hand. Until next time, peace. Are you a podcaster? Maybe you've got that big idea and you're looking for a network to join. The multi-award winning OzCast Network can get your content to eyes and ears all over the world. Join now for the first month free and you could be featuring this sound at the beginning of your podcast. OzCast. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details.